So my friend is standing in a 1,000 kilogram elevator. And I decide not to draw my friend because I don't ask about my friend. I don't ask about a normal force. I look at there's a tension pulling upward and there's a force of gravity pulling down. So it's the 1,000 kilogram elevator that is the body in question. I want to know the tension in the end and I know the tension is a force acting on this so I'm going to use a dynamics lens because these forces cause an acceleration but I don't know the acceleration yet so I need to use this kinematic information in order to find the acceleration before I can solve this problem. And so first I'm going to use a kinematics lens because I'm given velocity as an explicit function of time. So let's take a look at what we have. So I start at a height of 20 meters and she's moving downward so V naught, V initial is downward. She continues for her speed for one second so a continuous speed means that the acceleration is zero at the beginning for one second. I'll say the acceleration is zero and then smoothly comes to rest at some height over the next two seconds. So I don't know the final height but I know the velocity. So she's moving downward. She continues at the speed for one second and then smoothly comes to rest at some height over the next two seconds. So because she slows down, we know that the acceleration during this time is upward. Because the acceleration is upward, I'm going to call this the positive direction. Thus, she begins with a negative velocity of 8 meters per second. She continues for one second. And then over two seconds, or let's call this zero, over two seconds, she comes to rest with a final velocity of zero meters per second. And so here I can find, yes, the acceleration is zero, and the acceleration is zero, because there's no change in velocity. And here, the velocity is becoming more positive, and so I can write the acceleration is what? What's the slope of this line? The acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, which is the slope of this line, and we have positive 8 meters per second over 2 seconds is 4 meters per second squared. So this acceleration is 4 meters per second squared. And because I made this a straight line, its slope is constant, and this is a constant value. Now how about the displacement? I put this at the top because the elevator is moving downward. So I'm going to make this 20 meters up here, and I'll make this 0 meters here. For the first second, I'm moving at negative 8 meters per second for one second, so I lose 8 meters at a constant velocity. So this can be a straight line down to 8 meters. Oh, no, I lose 8 meters, so it's down to 12 meters, right? Because velocity is change in displacement over change in time. So it's a change in displacement is velocity times delta t. Or we could say it's the area under this graph. One second, negative 8 meters per second, negative 8 meters. So here we are at 12 meters. During this time, the velocity slows down to zero. So the slope of this line should taper off to zero. Here's constant velocity. And we should see this taper off to zero to where? Well, let's take a look at what is the area under this graph. And it's negative 8 meters per second times 2 seconds times 1 half because it's a triangle. And so that's another 8 meters. Well, that brings us to 4 meters. So by here, I should be at 4 meters. And I should have a constant displacement because my velocity is 0. And this slope should slowly decrease to 0. Now we want to find the tension, and I'm going to use a dynamics lens. Because these forces, tension and gravity, forces cause acceleration. I know that the vector sum of the forces on this guy is equal to mass times acceleration. And I have two regimes. One, where we're in equilibrium, where the sum of the forces must be zero and here where we're accelerating upwards. We can put zero, zero newtons right here. Now many students made the mistake to say, oh right, when acceleration is zero, 
the force is zero, so tension is zero. But, but that's not true because tension is only one of the forces. So we have tension plus the force of gravity is equal to mass times acceleration. And so if the acceleration is zero, it must mean that tension and force of gravity are equal and opposite. And when we're accelerating up, we expect the tension to be greater than the force of gravity. So we expect it to look something like this, where we have equal to the force of gravity, greater than the force of gravity, and then the force of gravity again, when we're in equilibrium at the end. So let's do it. I've written out my sum of the forces. There's tension pulling up and force of gravity pulling down in mass times acceleration. Oh, I need to pick a direction. I'm going to pick this as a positive direction because uh, I already did. It's the direction of my acceleration. So the only negative is gravity. And so I can just write tension is equal to the force of gravity now plus mass times acceleration. Excellent. So we have two regimes. Acceleration equals zero and their tension is equal to the force of gravity. And I can show that with tension plus the force of gravity gives me a sum total, the vector sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration equals zero. Excellent. And the force of gravity is mg, which is 1,000 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared is equal to 10 kilonewtons. And so I can put this 10 kilonewtons right here, 10,000 newtons. Now that I have an acceleration of 4 meters per second squared in here, I know that tension must be greater than the force of gravity. So there's a net force, sum of the forces equal mass times acceleration. And I can write this out now. The tension is equal to the same 10 kilonewtons plus 1,000 kilograms times 4 meters per second squared. Right, and so I've got 10 kilonewtons plus 4 kilonewtons is equal to 14 kilonewtons. So if this is 0, 10, 15, this would be 14 right here. This is what the tension would look like. As we're moving downward at a constant velocity, the tension is equal to the force of gravity. Here is greater than the force of gravity in order to accelerate the elevator, and then when we're at rest again is equal to the force of gravity.